Hi, so for today we are going to talk about the product rule no in differentiation and this is a part of the differential calculus so product rule we are going to differentiate using the product rule so basically the product rule is used when we have uh, two or more functions that are multiplied hence called product rule so to get the derivative of uh, that function okay let's say we have u and v you we are getting we are going to get the derivative of u and v prime so we have the formula we have u dv plus v du it means to say that we have only to copy first du then differentiate b then we have plus copy the function v and then differentiate the u so it's very simple in fact you, you need not to memorize this formula because uh, basically when we have two functions for example this is your u and this is uh, multiplied to another certain type of function for example we have a uh, exponential function multiplied by a uh, polynomial x okay so these two are different functions then therefore they are also multiplied then here is where the when the product rule is used whenever we have some certain functions that are multiplied okay especially if those functions are different functions okay let's say uh, exponential multiplied by trigonometric or trigonometric multiplied by a polynomial so etc etc so so I'll, I'll be teaching you not to memorize this formula okay so but here's a representation or the definition of the product rule so i included it in the video so for number one we are going we are we have 10 problems we are going to solve 10 problems here so for problem number one we have sine squared of x so basically when we rewrite this sine squared of x it's sine of x squared okay so meaning we have two sine of x that is multiplied to itself so we have y equals sine of x multiplied by sine of x okay so now we can apply the product rule this is your u this is your v so but as for me i i do not label it as it is whenever i try to solve some product rule in differentiation but what i do always is first in order to get a derivative of this i copy first the u which is sine of x and i will be differentiating the other sine of x which is my v and then plus copy v which is the original sine of x and i will be copying or differentiating the u so so technically this is our u this should be our dv when we differentiate this this is our v and this is our du when we differentiate it so the derivative of sine so we have sine of x the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x plus we have sine of x the derivative of derivative of sine of x which is cosine of x so technically we have sine of x times cosine of x then we have also sine of x cosine of x so we can definitely add them because they are really the same okay so that corresponds to uh, 2 sine of x cosine of x but recall that in trigonometric identity we have sine of 2x equals uh, we have 2 sine of x cosine of x so technically this uh, result of 2 sine of x cosine of x equals sine of 2x so the answer would be sine of 2x for our first problem for our second problem here i'll be rewriting it here so for number two we have two different functions we have the exponential function and then we have a trigonometric function okay so what are we going to do to get the derivative of that first copy the uh first uh function which is e raised to x then the second function is to be differentiated and then we have the plus because of the formula u dv plus v du so we copy the cosine of x and then we are going to differentiate e raised to x that's it okay that's how you uh perform product rule first copy the first one then differentiate cosine of x which is this one and then plus copy the second one and then differentiate the e raised to x so that's how i always use the product rule 
So we have y prime, we have e raised to x, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. Plus we have the cosine of x, the derivative of e raised to x is simply e raised to x. So we have now negative e raised to x of sine x, plus we have e raised to x cosine of x. So we can definitely factor e raised to x because they are common from both terms. So we have e raised to x, then we have negative sine of x plus cosine of x. This can be our answer for this number. So the product rule again is used whenever we have two functions that are multiplied. So for number 3, we have this problem. For number 3, we have x squared sine of x. So to get the derivative, first I'll pick x squared, then differentiate the second term, sine of x prime, then copy the second one, my v, sine of x, and then differentiate the x squared. So again, differentiate, we have x squared, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, plus we have sine of x, okay, and then we have 2x. So simplify, we have x squared cosine of x plus 2x sine of x, okay? So what can we simplify here? Both are common x. We have common x here. So I can simplify it as x, then x cosine of x plus 2 sine of x. So that's how we simplify this given uh, answer. Okay, that's for number 3. I hope you're learning. For number 4, we have y equals square root of x multiplied by 1 plus x. So it's again, very simple. First, we copy the square root of x, then we differentiate 1 plus x, and then copy 1 plus x, then differentiate square root of x. Now, for us to be able to... Uh, differentiate square root of x, we must uh, rewrite it into exponential form. So it's much easier to differentiate. So we have x raised to 1 half, the derivative of 1 plus x is 1. Because the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of x is 1. And then we have 1 plus x, then derivative of I forgot the, the the prime here. The derivative of square root of x. So we have 1 half x raised to 1 half minus 1. Then differentiate the inner function, which is 1, which is x. The derivative of x is 1. So we have x raised to 1 half multiplied by 1 is still x raised to 1 half. Then we have 1 plus x. Then we have 1 half x raised to negative 1 half. Multiplied by 1 is still 1 half x raised to negative 1 half. But by properties of exponent, we can rewrite 1 or 1 half this one as 1 all over 2 raised to x raised to 1 half. Okay, 1 half x raised to 1 half. So we use the property of uh, exponential wherein we, we can always get the reciprocal of this but negating its exponent likewise we have x raised to a all over 1 all over x raised to negative a. so that's what we did here so we have x raised to 1 half then <coughs> distributing this to our uh, uh, function or I mean we can now rewrite this x raised to 1 half as square root of x for simplification. So I will rewrite this also as square root of x, going back to square root. Okay? So this would be square root of x plus, then we have 1 plus x all over square root of x, 2 square root of x. So cross multiply to simplify, square root of x times 2 square root of x, that would be 2x because the square root sign will be eliminated. Square root of x times square root of x will be simply x. Plus the 1 plus x and then copy the same denominator here. Also. So simplify. So you have 2x plus 1 plus x all over 2 square root of x. 2x plus x, 3x. Then we have plus 1 all over 2 square root of 
x. So this will be our answer for number 4. So this is much uh, very exciting. So once we are done with the product rule, we are now ready to simplify our function in such a way that we can have the, bit, the, the simplified answer using algebraic methods. So for number 5, for number 5, we have uh, y equals 1 minus 2x, 2 minus x. Again, same old process. So we have 1 minus 2x, copy it first, then differentiate the second one. Then plus the second one, copy it, and then differentiate the first one. It's very easy. 1 minus 2x, then differentiate 2 minus x, it's negative 1 because of the negative x and then we have 2 minus x differentiate 1 minus 2x that's negative 2 because the uh, derivative of 1 minus 2x is negative 2 okay the derivative of constants is 0 and then negative 2x would be negative 2 so simplify so we have negative 1 plus 2x so imagine multiplying negative 1 to this interchanges the sign of this and then of course here also so we have negative 4, okay, and then plus 2x. Okay, then simplify. So we have negative plus 2x, 1 plus 2x minus 4 plus 2x. Okay, so you have 2x plus 2x is 4x. Minus 1 minus 4, negative 1 minus 4 would be negative 5. So 4x minus 5, that is our answer. Okay. For number 5. For number 6, we have y equals 3 minus 2x. Then we have 2 minus 3x. Same old process. Copy the first one. Then differentiate the second one, our v. And then copy the second one. Then differentiate the first one. uv plus vdu. udv plus vdu. So again, Copy this, then differentiate 2 minus 3x, that's negative 3. Then 2 minus 3x mult, uh, multiplied by the derivative of 3 minus 2x, that's negative 2. Okay, so that's negative 9 okay, plus 6x. Negative 3 times 3, negative 9. Negative 3 times negative 2x is positive 6x. So we have negative 4 negative 3x times negative 2 eh, negative 2 would be positive 6x so simplify we have negative 9 plus 6x minus 4 plus 6x so you have 12x minus negative 9 minus 4 would be negative 13 that's for number 6 and for number 7 we have four items left. We have y equals x squared plus 1. And then we have multiply it by x minus 1 at x equals 1. So meaning, when we have already differentiated the given function, we are going to substitute x equals 1 and get the result. So the result here will be a constant, will be a number, not an expression itself. So we have y prime. We have x squared plus 1 times x minus 1 prime plus x minus 1 times x squared plus 1 prime. So we have x squared plus 1, then derivative of x minus 1 is 1. Then we have x minus 1, derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So simplify, we have x squared plus 1, then we have 2x squared minus 2x. Okay, so simplify. So we have x squared plus 2x squared. That's 3x squared. Then we have minus 2x. Then we have plus 1. Okay. At x equals 1. Or I mean, that's negative 1. Okay, that's the original given, negative 1. At x equals negative 1. That's the original given. So sorry, I mistakenly write this or written it as 1 but it's it's really negative 1 so simplify 
we must substitute. So we have 3 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Negative 1 squared would be 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 would be positive 2. Then we have plus 1. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 plus 1. That is equivalent to 6. So our, our answer will be 6 for this problem. So for problem number 8, last 3 problem, we have y equals x, ln of x minus x. Okay, x, ln of x minus x. As we can see here, we have a product here, x, ln of x, and then we have an isolated differentiation here. So same old process. So we have x, ln of x prime plus ln of x, then x prime. So this is the that part only. This is this part only. We are still to differentiate negative x. Okay, so I'm writing minus x prime here. So that would be x, derivative of ln of x would be 1 all over x. Remember, when we are trying to differentiate ln of x, that is 1 all over x. So for example, the derivative of whatever is the inside function that becomes the numerator and the original value inside the ln will be the denominator. So for example, if I have uh, ln of 2x, differentiate 2x, that's 2, that's my numerator, and then copy the uh, denominator, that's all over 2x. So we have 1 all over x. Okay, So that's how we get the derivative of ln of x. So we have x cancelled. Then we have the derivative of x okay, is 1. And then we have also the derivative of x here would be 1. So you have now x all over x would be 1 plus ln of x minus 1. So as you can see, this 2, 1 minus 1 will cancel. So your answer would be simply ln of x. That is your answer. For second to the last problem, we have number 9. We have y equals square root of x minus 1 multiplied by square root of x plus 1. Same old process. So we have first to get the square root of x minus 1 and then differentiate square root of x plus 1 plus copy the square root of x plus 1 and then differentiate square root of x minus 1. So it's very simple. Again, we have square root of x minus 1. And then, the derivative of square root of x from what we have discussed a while ago, that's simply 1 all over 2 square root of x. And the derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, so we have square root of x here plus 1. Then again, we have the derivative of square root of x, that's 1 all over 2 square root of x. The derivative of negative 1 would be 0. So we have now square root of x minus 1, then multiplied by 1 all over 2 square root of x. Plus, we have square root of x plus 1 multiplied by 1 all over 2 square root of x. <clears throat> so, as you can see, this is numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, since this is multiplication. So, we have square root of x minus 1 all over 2 square root of x. Then, we have square root of x plus 1 all over 2 square root of x. So, they have the same denominator. So technically, we can add them. So we have square root of x minus 1 plus square root of x plus 1 all over 2 square root of x. Simplifying, we have square root of x times uh, square root of x plus square root of x, that is 2 square root of x. Negative 1 plus 1 will cancel. So technically, we have 2 square root of x all over 2 square root of x. That results to an answer of 1. Okay, so that's the answer. Simply 1. Okay. And down to our last number in product rule. We have number 10. Number 10 is y equals 2x plus 1 all over x cubed. So we can rewrite this as 2x plus 1 multiplied by 
x raised to negative 3. So, again, we can get the uh, reciprocal by negating the exponent. So, how, how did it happen like that? So, we have 1 all over x cubed. Then, using the property of uh, exponential form, so we have x raised to negative 3. So, we can now use the product rule. So, we have 2x plus 1 x raised to negative 3 prime plus x raised to negative 3 times 2x plus 1 prime. UDV plus the VDU. So, get the derivatives. So, we have 2x plus 1. We have negative 3x raised to negative 3 minus 1. A okay, power rule. And then times 1 because the derivative of x is 1. And then we have x raised to negative 3 derivative of 2x plus 1 would be 2 okay, plus 0 because the derivative of 1 is 0 or simply 2. So, we have 2x plus 1. Then, we have negative 3x raised to negative 4 plus we have 2x raised to negative 3. So, we simplify this first, the first term. So, we have 2x times negative 3x or negative 3 is negative 6. Their x is multiplied. So, we have an exponent here as 1 for, for the x. And we have an exponent here as negative 4. So, negative 4 plus 1 becomes negative 3. Okay? And then, this is multiplied by 1. So, technically, copying all of this. So, we can simplify negative 6x raised to negative 3 plus 2x raised to negative 3 minus 3x raised to negative 4. So, these two we can simplify. So, negative 6 plus 2, that's negative 4x raised to negative 3 minus 3x raised to negative 4. Now, by using the properties of the exponent, as much as possible, we don't want any negative exponent in the numerator. So, we have negative 4 all over x cubed minus 3 all over x raised to 4. By cross-multiplying these two to simplify our answer, we have negative 4 x raised to 4 minus 3 x raised to 3. And then, we are going to multiply these two. When we multiply, we add the exponent. So, that is 3 plus 4. So, we have x raised to 7. And then, we can now factor out the common term, which is x cubed, the least common term. So, we have x cubed. Then we have negative 4x minus 3 all over x raised to 7. So as you can see, this is further simplified. x cubed will be cancelled by x raised to 7. So we have a, an, a remaining 4 here, x raised to 4. So that becomes negative 4x minus 3 all over x raised to 4. Factoring out the negative sign, we have negative 4x, okay, then plus 3 all over x raised to 4 and that will be our final answer for this problem and that's it guys so thank you so much for listening i hope you learned something new today about how easy it is to perform product rule in differential calculus if you're new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe and share this to your friends who are having a struggle in their mathematics subject or in differential calculus most specifically, more specifically for the product rule in differentiation. So thank you so much guys and God bless.